Hi there! In this video, we will be discussing about the biotic and abiotic components in an ecosystem as well as the different ecological relationships. So let's get started! In our previous lessons, we learned about the different biological levels which are arranged in a unique and complex hierarchical organization. If you still haven't watched the lesson on the levels of biological organization, you can pause this video and watch that one first to better understand our lesson today. An ecosystem is made up of abiotic and biotic components that work together to maintain balance. Preceded by the prefix a, which means without, followed by the Greek word bias, which means life, abiotic therefore means without life. It is the non-living component or the physical and chemical aspect of an ecosystem. On the other hand, the biotic component is the living component of an ecosystem. This includes all living organisms that are dependent to one another. This means that each living organism has a relationship to other living organisms. Abiotic components include the sun, water, air, weather, and soil. Biotic components include various plants, animals, and bacteria that act as producers, consumers, or decomposers. Now let's differentiate both abiotic and biotic components in the ecosystem. Abiotic components do not depend on biotic factors for their existence. With or without the biotic components, there will still be abiotic components in the ecosystem. On the other hand, biotic components depend on abiotic factors for their survival and growth, meaning biotic components cannot live without the abiotic components. In terms of relationship, abiotic factors determine the number and type of living organisms surviving an ecosystem. On the other hand, living organisms might be directly or indirectly related to other organisms in an ecosystem. Interactions and relationships exist in an ecosystem in search for food, shelter, and protection. These interactions may have positive, neutral, or even negative influences on the interacting population. Some interactions are beneficial, while others are harmful. There are also interactions where populations of organisms are neither benefited nor harmed. These interactions are called ecological relationships. There are five types of relationships that exist in an ecosystem, namely mutualism, commensalism, parasitism, predation, and competition. Let's start first with mutualism. Mutualism is an ecological relationship where both organisms are benefited. It plays an important role in the growth, reproduction, and survival of the organisms and in maintaining the balance of the ecosystem. It exhibits a positive-positive relationship. An example of this is the relationship that exists between clownfish and sea anemones. The clownfish provides the anemone nutrients in the form of waste while also scaring off potential predator fish, while the sea anemone provides the clownfish with protection and shelter. A remora fish would attach itself to a shark and use the shark for transportation. The remora eats all the food that is left over from the shark. The symbiotic relationship between them is called commensalism, where one organism is benefited while the other one is not affected nor harmed. The remora is getting its food, but the shark gets no benefit. This relationship usually exists between a larger organism and a smaller one. The organism which gets the benefits is called the commensal. 
The commensal uses the other organism, the host, for transport, shelter, or protection. This is a positive neutral relationship. Parasitism is a positive negative relationship where one organism is benefited while the other is affected and harmed. The organism that benefits from the relationship is called a parasite, which is usually smaller than the other organism, the host. The mosquito is a parasite that lives outside the body of the host. It sucks blood from the skin of animals or humans, which are the host. There are some parasites that can cause diseases. Bacteria and other microscopic organisms live inside the body of the host and cause diseases like pneumonia and malaria. Another relationship that exists in the ecosystem is the food-getting relationship. One organism is benefited while the other one is killed and eaten by the other organism. This relationship is called predation. An animal that kills and eats other animals is called a predator. An animal that is killed and eaten by its predator is called a prey. The prey are less powerful than the predator that eats them. In a given community, predators compete with other predators for prey. In the wild, a predator may be another prey of another predator. This means that while an animal hunts and feeds upon another animal, it can also become prey to a larger and stronger predator. In the ecosystem, competition takes place when organisms compete for limited resources like food, space, shelter or territory, and mates. Competition may happen between organisms of the same species or between different species. In competition, both the organisms involved are harmed or affected negatively. It has a negative negative effect on the organisms. To summarize, an ecosystem is made up of abiotic and biotic components that work together to maintain balance. The abiotic component is the non-living component or the physical and chemical aspect of an ecosystem. On the other hand, the biotic component is the living component of an ecosystem. This includes all living organisms that are dependent to each other, meaning each living organism has a relationship to other living organisms. The five types of ecological relationships are mutualism, commensalism, parasitism, predation, and competition. That's all for now. We will be discussing about the effect of changes in abiotic factors on the ecosystem in our next video, so stay tuned! See you on our next video and don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.